Right, I start and that's it. Okay, so welcome, thank you for coming uh, and skipping lunch. No, we'll have lunch later. This is a short presentation. My name is Giacomo Tenaglia. I'm going to talk about open source um, for about 10, 15 minutes. So how many of you are familiar with uh, what open source is? You have to raise the hands, etc. Yes. Uh, how many of you have pu published some code on GitHub or other platforms? Yes. Uh, how many of you are maintaining some open source projects? Oh, very good, well done. So I don't have anything to teach, and you can go to have lunch. No, uh, it's okay. I'm, uh, I'm just going to, uh, how many of you are lawyers? No, very good. Okay, so I'm, uh, I I'm also not a lawyer. I'm a computer scientist. I work at CERN at the IT department, running some uh, scientific computing and configuration management services, but I've been uh, building services uh, with open source components for the last 25 years. And I recently helped start the CERN Open Source Program Office. So I'm not a lawyer, this is not legal advice, but I've been involved in open sourcing stuff for the last uh, around 10 years at CERN at least. And, um, and that's it. So uh, once again, okay, what's open source? So it's a special kind of software that is using copyrights to permit what we call the four freedoms of software. So the freedom of using, share, um, uh, study, and improve. And this is done via special licenses, right? So that there's also open source hardware that adds another freedom, the freedom to manufacture the design. And uh, so those two concepts are very important, the copyright and license. And, um, and as I mentioned, in we, at CERN we started an open source program office. It's a body that helps an organization uh, produce and consume open source. So doing it right and to, to mitigate uh, legal risks and to do things correctly for the, for, to make sure that the software is properly licensed and, and reusable from, uh, because it's all about contributing it outside. So um, let's say you have your nice piece of code. This is actually an old code from the previous acceler CERN accelerator, but the picture is cool and, uh, and you want to publish it. So basically the publishing checklist has two boxes and that's it more or less, we simplify, there are no lawyers, so it's fine. And uh, so a copyright and license. So copyright is basically about knowing who actually owns the intellectual property of your code. So that's, uh, th this may or may not be clear. Uh, it is typically the person who wrote the code, but it depends because if you're coding for a living, typically your employer owns the intellectual property. And, uh, and if the file is shared between uh, some people contributed to the, to the made changes to your file, depending on, the, on how significant that those changes are, then they, they will also own intellectual property on the, on the file, etc. So in general, you, it is your employer. Now, of course, there's also the world of coding assistance, and this is a bit, gets a bit fuzzy. So I know, for example, in some Italian public administrations, it's forbidden to use coding assistance because they, you don't know who actually owns the, the IP there. And, um, and another interesting thing to know is when was the file first written. So the, this now, nowadays, the, it's the only year that, that there is general consensus that it's enough to put just the first year of the creation of the file. Then uh, subsequent modifications, it's, uh, it's fine. You can, uh, you, can just, you can just leave the first year as long as it's uh, correct. So yes, this is done. We know who owns the uh, uh, intellectual property, so we know the so copyright, the copyright here. And now we have to figure out the license. So uh, an actual lawyer uh, once told me that the uh, open source licensing are a hack on copyright uh, because, like this, you can uh, just authorize some actions that you wouldn't uh, otherwise be able to to authorize. So there's basically three groups of licenses. Uh, permissive ones where you just grant permissions to do basically whatever they want with the code to whoever gets it. Then there's two classes of reciprocal licenses, strong and weak. Weak is typically done with libraries where you are asking people to publish the modifications that they make to your code, but they can integrate it in their uh, products without affecting them. And then strongly reciprocal where basically your the, the, the code that integrates your code or library then becomes, that has also obligations to be published. So the, this has been defined 
uh, as, a, as a cancer by some uh, private companies in the past, but is actually how many of the, of the world free software, free and open source software works. And um, so, so there's basically those three classes of licenses. And then if you, if you look out on the, on the internet, you'll find like diagrams how to choose a license. There's a website by GitHub, like choosealicense.com. There's other websites. I found, I found this diagram pretty funny. Maybe you cannot read, or maybe you can. The funniest part, I think, is the, is the bottom uh, left one, which side of the Mississippi you live on. So if you live on the east of the Mississippi, it's suggesting MIT, because Boston is on the east side. And, uh, and, uh, and west, you suggest BSD, because this is Berkeley standard distribution, so it's on the west. But anyway, it's a bit complicated, but in general, in general, you are kind of free for original work, so work you basically own 100%, or your uh, employer owns 100%, you can follow your employer recommendations, or basically pick the license of your choice. And typically also choosing an ecosystem-specific license is a good idea, if all the plugins of the system that you are developing are released under BSD, then it's a good idea probably to pick BSD. And, uh, and then, of course, if this is not only your work, you have to sort out who owns the IP, and then this because this is combined or derivative work, and then you have to check the license, check the license compatibility. This goes, I mean, that there could be like a four-hour talk on this, so I'm not going uh, to, to go through this. And in general, also for, for config files or documentation, one goes more towards Creative Commons licenses rather than, than towards software software-specific licenses. So both license and copyright information has to be, have to be applied to every single file in your repository. And th th this is considered to be uh, like a best practice, so you can track this. And then, of course, the, the project grows and, and, and things happen and contributors come and go and coding conventions and maybe refactoring, etc. And then after a while, well, of course, yes, you, you publish the checklist you, you, you finish your checklist, and then after a while, your code looks like this. So this is an actual blackboard at CERN. Some of my colleagues probably know what's, what's here, but I've seen some Git repositories that look a bit like this in terms of with, with multiple licenses. Yeah, OK, I'll slap just an extra BSD license on top of this file that has already been licensed with some other, something else. So it's just, it's just a total mess. And uh, fortunately, there's like frameworks and tools that can help sorting out um, this and define a more standard way uh, to, to define copyright and license information. One of those is the reuse software uh, framework that is um, developed by the Free Software Foundation Europe. And it is uh, basically um, a way to add machine and, and human readable uh, annotations to the code to express copyright and license information. So the so this comes with the major advantages of, of improving automation and standardization, but you have to, this comes at the price of having to make modifications to your, uh, to your repository. So here you have a link to the tutorial, but I, I want just to show um, a couple of things. So basically you have to drop a directory with all the licenses. This is another thing that many people add while adding the open source license to their project, they, add, they modify the license text and they add their copyright into the license text. Apache, uh, copyright, whatever, uh, and the copyright year in the license text, but the license text should be untouched. So basically like this, you drop all the licenses that you use in your project. In this case, we can see that, that there's some, some Creative Commons licenses, uh, the CC0 probably for config files, some even open hardware licenses for some design schematics. And, and then some other GNU licenses, because in one single project you can have different portions that are released under different licenses. And, um, and then you add annotations to your code in a form that is so-called, that is using uh, SPDX, which is the Software Package Data Exchange uh, format. This is supposed to be human readable. I mean, for, for me, it works. My wife doesn't agree, but it's, it's fine. I think for computer scientists or people just developing it's, it's readable enough. You have some acron you have some um, uh, some identifiers for the for the licenses. In this case, GPLv3 or later, and then you see you, you just mentioned that you add your copyright statement and your and uh, and your license. You can add also other information. The SPDX form uh, standard is pretty broad, in fact. And then you have even uh, that they use the FSFE. They've uh, developed a set of tools that you can use to 
to run on your repository to check that everything is compliant. And um, that's it. I wanted just to show a couple of examples. One is the reuse tool itself. And uh, yeah, so here we can see that they, there is a licenses directory with all the different uh, licenses. And you can also like bulk license for example, documentation directories or images by using a dedicated file that is called reuse.toml, with where you put that. Uh, yeah, some some of the files are are licensed with a, with a specific license, etc. This is this is not replacing labeling every single file, but maybe some files cannot be labeled, like images, for example. And um, that's it. There's. There's a GitHub action that you can include in your code to, in order to get also the badge of being uh, reuse compliant. So this is, uh, this is very interesting. And that's it. But of course, once you sort out the, the license information, the copyright, and now you have maybe a way even to check that people did the right thing in your repository, but this is only the tip of the iceberg because then you can get into, I mean, depending on what you, uh, how, how you want to do things properly, uh, you, you can get into the world of open source compliance. And another lawyer said that the F in compliance is for fun, and it's true, because it's, it's very complicated. And, uh, and basically, but this is, for example, what we try to do now at, CERN, at, the, at the open source program office when we get a request to open source and publish a project, is to try to scan the repo to, we have, uh, th there's many like scanners, I'll put some references later, and then uh, to extract like a summary of the, of the list of the components on the, um, on the repo. This is called the software bill of materials. I will not go too much into details on this. And then to try to fix the issues that may arise, double copyright, missing copyright, missing license, and then check, ah, but wait, this license doesn't combine well with this other license. So. There's, um, th there's a very wide tool landscape for, for, for stuff like, for example, this workbench where you basically load your, uh, um, your project and you can clear the different files and you can check that, the, for example, the copyright is fine, the license, for some reason there's two licenses here, LGPL and NCSA, why? You have to check, this is like a 30 years, or 10, 15 years old project, so, uh, this requires a lot of interaction, but this typically you do it once before publishing and then it's kind of easy to, to follow. So, um, so to summarize, it's basically what, what the lawyers would say is that it, this is all about uh, reputation and risk mitigation. So you want to risk, you want to minimize the risks uh, of, of being sued by someone or, uh, or in general being seen as someone who doesn't do things properly. So we need to check copyright, choose the license, possibly wisely. And then uh, if you want to go deeper, there's no uh, basically lower end to how deep you want to go. But of course, you can check with your OSP if you have one or with a, an actual intellectual property lawyer when in doubt. We are lucky enough at CERN to have in our OSP one IP lawyer who is very competent and, very, and is very good at raising things that we as technical people don't really know or didn't really think about, and, uh, and that's it. So I put uh, uh, a few references to the, to the tooling at the CERN Open Source Program Office. We are also interested in collaborating with external parties. Thank you.